Praise the Lord, everyone. If we could all stand. Yesterday, I was on our way home. I had Layla and Trip, and Trip screaming, crying, and finally he stops crying. And I'm talking to Layla, and she's all upset. So I told her, I'm like, what are we going to do tomorrow? And she has no idea what we're doing tomorrow. I said, we're going to see Grammy and Poppy, and she gets a little more excited. I said, where do we get to see them usually? And she goes, and I'm not going to say it right. She goes, church. But she says it like she can't pronounce the R, so it's cute. And I go, are you excited for church? She goes, yeah, yeah, I'm so excited for church. And I was just I was just smiling happy because, you know, back when I was a kid, I usually screamed at my mom I didn't want to come to church. So it was usually a good thing when my kid says that she wants to go to church. But I was just thinking of throughout her life, she's only two, but every Wednesday she's going to be here. Every Sunday she's going to be here. And she's going to know that we serve a God that can touch all our needs. And if we could just praise him right now and just say, God, whatever my need is, I know you can touch it. stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working and even when i don't feel that you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop Stop, you never stop working. We make 
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. stop working you never stop you never stop working pray make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are pray make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you believe the Lord can make a way right now for you, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your voices. If you believe God can make a way where there seems to be no way, if you believe the Lord is able, you just lift up a shout, lift up a praise, let the name of the Lord be exalted, for God can make a way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, he is. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop.
lost are safe, find their way, Absalom, have your great name, all condemned, feel no shame, Absalom, of your great
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, what's his name? Jesus. Jesus. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the Almighty. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. He is the one that was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Pray. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. God, we magnify you, Jesus. Amen. Paul, it's good to see you back. Glad you're here. God bless you in Jesus' name. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. We want to pray for Brother Zizmer that is at uh, the hospital, Camden Clark. Uh, they took, his wife, Sister Lisa, took him to the ER. He was having difficulty breathing. And so we want to pray that God touch him. And also Sister Massey, Carol Massey, is in Charleston Hospital. They admitted her today with issues with her heart. So we want to pray and ask God to touch Sister Massey, and there's just a lot of needs tonight. Uh, Brother Jake's grandfather, Roger, in need of God's touch. Uh, Sister Charlotte, uh, going to the doctor tomorrow. Uh, Bob Weddle, uh, got a good report, but let's still pray for him. Virgil got a good report tonight. I thank God to hear all of that, but let's still pray for him. And also, Brother David Chapman, uh, Sister Janie's sister, uh, Danny and her husband Andrew in need of prayer. Uh, her dad, Bill, in need of prayer. Sister Birchfield uh, in need of prayer. Also, brother and sister McKimmy's son, David. Uh, David McKimmy in need of prayer. And uh, he got a report from the doctor. It was not a good report, but he's not receiving that report. He's claiming a report of faith. Amen. Amen. So we want to pray for brother David McKimmy and ask the Lord to touch him, and we're gonna believe with him for a miracle for him in Jesus' name. And there's just a lot of other names, sister, uh, for Tracy O'Neill, need a prayer. Um, my wife's sister, Sister Caressa, need a prayer. And uh, the North American Youth Congress is just about to get underway. Are there, is service starting at seven or 7.30? Seven. So in five minutes, they're gonna start their first service. Now, I wanna show you a picture. This picture was taken earlier tonight. This is outside the arena. This right here. This is outside, now this is just one entrance. There are, what, four different entrances? Yeah, multiple entrances that, that are coming into the arena. This is just one of them. They're expecting 35 thousand young people 35,000 young people folks this is going to be an explosion right here this is going to be spiritual spiritual uh, atomic bomb going off right here in in st. Louis at this arena that they are at it's going to be absolutely incredible and these young people have shown up hungry. Uh, I've never seen a generation so hungry for the move of God. It, it's, it's hungrier than, than, the gener than generations past. This generation, they want it all. They, they want the miracles. They want the signs. They want the wonders. And they even want the holiness. I'm talking about this generation. They want the holiness that goes with it. So I want us to pray. I want us to pray over this meeting. I want us to pray over the speakers. I'm not even sure who all the speakers are. I know they've got sessions, they've got services, they've got breakouts. There's a, a lot of people involved in this. This is a huge, huge undertaking. Uh, but let's, let's pray over this. God, it, meetings like this are gonna change the world. Young people like this are gonna change the world right here so let's pray over these young people and ask God to to 
uh, move mightily in that place. There is going to be such an anointing in there. Uh, I, I think I could easily prophesy right now that there are going to be workers that work in the arena that didn't come for the meeting but just work there that are going to get the Holy Ghost. They're going to, just because they're in the presence of what's going to be in that place, they're going to get the Holy Ghost. It's, it's going to be an absolute incredible meeting. So I want us to pray over that. And as you can see, that's, this is just night one. And uh, I, that was early. I'd say that crowd probably at least doubled or tripled before they opened the doors. Uh, they, and they, what time were they opening the doors? Six? 5.30? Okay, so this, this is at least an hour and a half before church start. Boy, I like that. I like that right there. I wish we had to hold our doors till 5.30 or whatever and, and people stand outside to get in like that, Brother Holman. That's what I want right there. I, I want a policeman up here at the, at the light having to direct traffic when church lets out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But you know for that to happen, we've got to have a bigger parking lot. We got a bigger parking lot. We'll have to build the sanctuary on down through there for that to happen. But we serve a God of miracles, a way maker, a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Let's pray for that meeting that God will touch. I mean, how many have an unspoken need tonight? Just slip your hand up. Jesus knows all about it. So let's pray. Pray for this service. God will bless this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Oh, God, I come before you, Lord. Lord, we bless your name. Oh, God, we bless your name. And we exalt you tonight, Lord, for your great. Oh, God, we can't measure your greatness. God, we are, there's no way, God, for us to figure out how, how great you are. But, God, we know you are. And we pray tonight, oh, God, as we bind together, we unite together. We're two or three are gathered in your name. You're in the midst. So, God, we pray tonight in the name of Jesus, God, that you would touch and minister tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray over this meeting. I pray over you. Youth Congress right now. I pray by the authority of your word, by the power in the name of Jesus. I pray an anointing of God upon, <laughs> upon every worshiper, every singer, every preacher, every session, every young person. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for an outpouring, life-changing, Holy Ghost move. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, you release callings. I pray you release gifts of the Spirit. I pray you release anointings in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we believe it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God, I pray, Lord, over every name on this prayer list. I pray for the sick. God, heal the sick. Oh, God, raise them up as a testimony to your power, to your greatness, to your glory. Every unspoken need. God, every hand that was raised in this sanctuary, we pray by your power, God, that you touch tonight in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray salvation to the lost. I pray salvation to the lost. I pray salvation to the lost. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, Lord, save the lost. Save the backsliders. God, bring the backsliders back to you, oh, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. By your power, oh, Lord. Oh, God, in your mighty name. Order this service in the Holy Ghost tonight. Lord, let every part of it be ordered of God. Oh, Lord, you're able tonight by your power, by your anointing, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we'll give you all the glory and all the praise, all the honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. I don't know what to do. Jesus' name. And that's where I belong. Take me to the place, Lord, to the secret place where I can be with you. You can make me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. like to be anointed and prayed for would you come did you come if you like to be anointed and prayed for tonight let us anoint you and ask God to touch you in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah oh blessed be your name Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, be healed. Jesus' name.
God, take us to that place, God. Take us to that place, God. Take us to that secret place. Oh, la mosita, la Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise right now. Let's, with the fruit of your lips, your hands raised, let's magnify and worship him. God, we love you, Jesus. God, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, that's it. Pray in the spirit. Let the Holy Ghost move through you right now. Let the Holy Ghost move through you right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Worship in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name. Lord, I feel you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The ushers come and worship the Lord, giving tonight. We give us unto the Lord, press down, shaken together and running over. We give unto God tonight. For God has given unto us, has he not? God has given unto us. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, we can't up at a price of what we feel in this place. God, there is no value that could equal, God, what you have done for us through Calvary's blood. So tonight, God, we worship you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. With our voice, we give you praise. With hands lifted, oh God, we magnify you. And Lord, we worship you, God, tonight. For it's out of giving, God, that we return to you and give to you, O oh God, into your kingdom. Bless it, God, for your glory. Multiply it. I pray, God, you just, Lord, double it in the name of Jesus. And I pray a double blessing on the giver. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Good to see everybody tonight. Thank you for being in the house of God. Forgot to give out the prayer request. He'll take this prayer request sheet and pray. Brother Brent, thank you. Amen. Appreciate, I appreciate you folks praying over these names, these folks that uh, their names on the prayer list. When you take that prayer sheet, I know that prayer sheet is going before the Lord every day. And those folks are going before the Lord every day. And I believe God is answering prayers we don't even know about. I believe there's prayers you pray over that prayer list that gets answered you don't ever hear about. But God has answered prayer because you prayed. Because you prayed. Amen. Stand with me a moment if you would. I am glad to tell you I went to the doctor today. My doctor told me, he said, looks like you're taking good care of yourself. I told her, I said, well, I must have thought I was sicker than I was. You ever, you ever done that? Thought you were sicker than you actually were? I told her, I said, I must, I must have thought I was sicker than I was. Acts chapter 16, three verses. And we're going to skip through Acts chapter 16 uh, to read these three verses. Acts chapter 16, starting at verse 13. Could have chose any place in the book of Acts actually to go and to preach this message, pretty much, uh, almost, almost any chapter, especially in the first part of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 16, verse 13, the Bible says, And on the Sabbath day, or on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down, spake unto the women, which resorted thither. Skip down. Just a few verses to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 and verse 16. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Skip down one other verse. On down in chapter 16 to verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Now, I'd, I'd say some of you already know where I'm going. You probably already connected to the scriptures, and you know where I'm going. I want to preach to you in the next few minutes when the church prays. When the church prays. Can we, can we pray together right now when the church prays? Let's pray. God, in your name, I thank you, Lord, for the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost. And I pray right now the unction of your spirit to be upon me as your servant of the Lord, God, to deliver the word. I am totally, God, dependent on you. I am totally dependent upon your anointing. There's nothing in my flesh, God, that could bring anything out of this. But, God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, you can do a work tonight. And I believe you, God. I believe this word is for tonight. And Lord, I ask you, God, that, your, that our minds be alert to receive the word of God. And Lord, let it fall on good ground. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands to God one more time. Lift your voices to the Lord one more time. And give the Lord some praise tonight. I worship you, Jesus. I glorify you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Oh, you're so great. God, you're so great, and I praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. You may be seated. Acts chapter 16, you could almost say that's the center of the book of Acts, 28 chapters in the entire book, the history of the church. But by the time Acts chapter 16 rolls around, the church has been in full swing. Pentecost has happened. The day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost was poured out. 
Peter preaches on the day of Pentecost, the Acts 2.38 message. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 3,000 are added to the church as they continue. The church continues to go. The church is literally steamrolling at this time. It's, it's going strong. There's power. There's anointing. The, the church is excited about what God is doing, and they're going strong. And you get to on over, and, and Paul and Silas are beaten after the man at the gate beautiful is healed. And then they pray, and, and they have their own prayer meeting. Acts chapter 8 happens, and the gospel goes to the city of Samaria. Acts chapter 10 happens, and the gent door to the Gentile church is opened up, and all of a sudden the gospel is open to the whole world. And anybody, whosoever will, is now able to come and receive receive of the waters of life freely and the church is moving on and you get to Acts chapter 16 Paul has been stoned he's been in Iconium he's been in Lystra he, he has he's pre preaching the gospel and and Peter and and John or Peter and Paul have been are, are out doing missionary work Barnabas is out doing the work of the gospel and the gospel is being spread but the one thing you see happening and they all went different directions and they all do their own thing but the one thing that's common among among them is that you find the church is still praying. The church didn't stop praying after Pentecost. The church didn't stop praying after, after the gospel went to Samaria. And the church didn't stop praying after the Holy Ghost was poured out upon the household of Cornelius. The church is still praying. The one common thread through the book of Acts from Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 28 is that the church continues to pray. My question is my question to the church and not us necessarily us because I may be preaching to the choir tonight uh, quite honestly but let, let, let me just ask the question anyway when did it come when did it become vogue to stop praying when did prayer lose its importance when did prayer stop being the avenue that God uses to minister to us? When did prayer stop being the way that we get a hold and contact God and that we move into the presence of God? When, when did the church decide to stop praying? There's an old saying, and I heard it a lot when I was in the business world, especially when I was in management in Charleston. I managed the radio stations there, and, and I uh, was taking care of business, and I did some seminars, and so forth and so on for the people that work for, for us. And one of the sayings that came from John Maxwell, or I don't know if he created it, but anyway, he's, he kind of made it famous. And the saying is this, if you always do, you ever heard this one? If you always do what you always done, you always get what you always got. Now, we, we applied that. When we're in the business world, we applied that to you need to step up. That if you, if, you, if, you keep, if you keep operating at this level, you're always going to get what comes at this level. But if you step up a level, you're going to get what comes at, a, at that level. Now, I want to take it a little different tonight when it comes to prayer. If you always do what you always done, you're always going to get what you always got. In other words, if God answered prayer back then and you always do what you always done, then God's going to answer prayer today because if you always do what you always done, you're going to always get what you always got. <laughs> prayer, prayer is not something that goes out of fashion. Prayer doesn't come and go with the trends of, of, of Paris and Hollywood. And prayer doesn't come and go with the trends of political society. And prayer doesn't come and go because I read somewhere that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he's the same yesterday and he answered prayer then and he's the same today, he'll answer prayer now. So that's why Moses Psalm 99 and verse 6, the Bible says Moses and Aaron among the priests, or Moses and Aaron among his priests, and, they, and, and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. If you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. I know the old timers, but I hear about those all night prayer meetings. Anybody ever heard about them? Anybody here ever been in an all night prayer meeting? Have you? All night prayer meetings? Yeah. They, they used to do those a long time ago. Long, all night prayer meetings. Man, they, 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 they'd be praying and they'd, they'd, 
They didn't wait till 11 o'clock to start either. They started at 7. They started an all night prayer meeting at 7 o'clock. And you pray all night long. All night long. And those old timers, boy, they'd get in there and they'd dig in, wouldn't they? Oh, they'd pray. They'd lay on the floor. They'd lean against the wall. They were laying down the steps, up the steps. They, they, they were doing everything, praying, seeking the face of God. And they saw miracles. And they saw uh, miraculous things happen. And, and God moved in unbelievable ways. I remember there was a man, he, he was really out west mostly. You may have heard of him. He was an apostolic preacher. His name was Ver Verbal Being. Anybody ever hear of Verbal Being? Verbal Being. Did you, did you ever hear him preach? Did you? No. On tape. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think he passed away before I was in the church. Um, I, I think he passed away quite some time ago, actually. And Verbal Bean was a great preacher. Verbal Bean, Verbal Bean was a man of prayer. And Verbal Bean prayed two to three hours a day. Two to three hours a day. And, and Verbal Bean, he, 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 he credited his entire ministry to prayer. He, he had a powerful anointed ministry. He credited prayer. One time, he, he, I remember reading, uh, he has a book out, Verbal Being. It's on prayer. You can get it, I think, from Amazon. And I think it was in that book. It was either that book or another book he wrote. But anyway, he, he was talking about how a man that was deaf had come to him. Maybe you all have read this or heard it. A man that was deaf came to him and, and, and wanted him to pray for him. And, and Verbal Being said, oh, I wanted to be faithful to God, and I wanted to minister to this man. So he said, I prayed for him. He said, I felt nothing. I felt absolutely nothing. He said, that was probably the driest prayer I ever prayed in my life. I felt nothing. And, and we finished praying, and the guy went on about his business. Next morning, the guy shows up for church. Guess what? The guy walks in the door. He, he's got his hearing. God had healed him through the night because of a dry prayer. Because of a man that, that, that built his ministry on prayer. Let me tell you something. Maybe sometimes you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and make yourself go to the prayer room. But you better make yourself go to the prayer room because it's prayer. It's prayer that connects you to God. It's prayer that establishes your ministry. It's prayer. You will never go more deeper in your ministry than your prayer life. To the power of prayer. And we've got to get back to that place where we build our altars and we have our prayer times and we dedicate ourselves to prayer. When did it become important that we quit praying? I'm telling you, when the church prays, God does miracles. When the church prays, there's an upward of the Spirit. When the church prays, the devil's on the run. When the church prays, I remember, how many, how many of you talk to people throughout the day? You got somebody you talk to at some point due to the day. Pretty much all of us, right? We all talk to somebody. You talk to your mom, your dad. You talk to your daughter, your son. You talk to your spouse, somebody you talk to all day. How would that relationship go if you quit talking to them? How would that, how would that work, Sister Kelsey? if Nick decided he wasn't going to talk to you all day long. Yeah. That was a very nice way of putting it. You, you, you take a marriage relationship and you don't talk to each other and you talk about a marriage that's in trouble, that marriage is in trouble. That marriage is going to be strained. You got children that, that don't talk to their parents and then that relationship is estranged and, and, you, and you got problems there. And then if you try to go to work and, you're, and you, you won't talk to your boss, and then you got problems on the, on the job because everything we do is built on communication and relationship. Everything we do, our marriage, our work, our family, our neighborhood, all of it, everything is built on communication and relationship. And if you don't communicate, 
If you don't talk to one another, then that relationship becomes weak and that relationship becomes strained. And it's the same way with God. If you don't pray, if you are not a person of prayer who seeks the face of God and puts yourself down at an altar, at a place, and cry out to God, if you're not a person that reaches out in prayer, my friend, your relationship with God is strained. When did it become vogue not to pray anymore? When did it become popular not to pray anymore? We've got to get back to praying. We've got to get back to praying. You know, but some people, some people think, well, I've, you know, I've prayed enough. I've, I've probably built up my prayers in heaven, and I can probably live on those for the rest of my life. You know, Kind of think of it like this. Anybody here got bills? Anybody got bills? Okay. Got an electric bill? You know, thing about an electric bill is you got to pay that bill in full every month. Every month you got to pay that bill in full. Because if you don't pay, oh, I'll, I'll pay $20 this month on your $120 electric bill. And I know they'll be glad they got it. And they'll be glad when they show up to turn your electric off too. <laughs> because you've got to pay it in full every month. Now how many's got a car payment? How many's got a car payment? You got a car payment? You don't pay that bill in full every month, do you? No, you pay a little bit, and that, ma that adds up. And then you go and you, you pay the next bill, and that adds up. And you pay the next bill, and that adds up. It's the same way in your prayer life. There are some prayers that you pray, and you, you pray those in full, and that's going to get you through. But there's some of them you got to keep praying. You got to keep laying it on the altar. You got to keep going back and saying, God, here's my prayer installment. I'm praying again. I'm praying for my son. I'm praying for my kids. God, I'm back. I'm praying again. And Lord, it just keeps, and it just keeps mounting up before God. And you got to keep praying. We got to get back as a church to prayer, to prayer. <laughs> prayer is vital to the church. It's vital. Everything we do around here ought to be backed up by prayer. Every person that steps in this pulpit to deliver the word of God better have been on an altar and before they're facing God in prayer. They better have sought God in prayer before they step up here. Every singer, the part of this worship team, had better have spent some time in prayer before they come up here and say they're going to lead in worship. How can you lead in worship if you don't know where you're going? How can you lead in preaching if you don't know where you're going? And that's what you find out in prayer. Prayer is vital. It was vital to the early church, and it's got to be vital to us today. Over 20, over 30 times, at least one time per chapter in the book of Acts, and the book of Acts only has 28 chapters, but over 30 times, prayer, 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 prayer. Talks about prayer over and over again. Prayer. The church prayed from the start to the finish. They didn't get started in prayer and then kind of slack off. They said, we got we to keep praying. Prayers, this thing started in prayer. This thing's going to end in prayer. And we got to make sure we pray. Amen. Prayer is vital. Why is prayer so important? important? Why is prayer so emphasized in the scripture? And why do we spend so much time talking about prayer? I'm going to give you three reasons. Three reasons. Number one, when we think of church, you know what we think about? We think about worship and we think about preaching. That's usually what we think about when we think of church. Worship and preaching. Because honestly, folks, 
Prayer is the foundation of everything we do around here. Everything we do around here needs to be covered in prayer. Everything from, 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 the, from the playing the keyboard to, to playing the bass to playing the drums, everything we do around here, the worship, the preaching, the, the, the Sunday school teaching, that needs to be covered in prayer. I, I, we need some Sunday school teachers that are on their knees on Saturday night because the souls of those kids are in their hands on Sunday morning and they need a word from the Lord and they need an anointing of God and they need the power of the Holy Ghost. Healthy church is a praying church. And healthy saints are praying saints. You can tell somebody that spends time in prayer. Their demeanor will tell you. Their faith will tell you. When a storm comes, you can tell if they've been in prayer or not. By how they respond to the storm. They, you, you can tell what, how, they're, how, they're, how they're dealing with it, if, if they, how they respond to the storm how they deal with it, whether they build a foundation of prayer in their life or not. There is sometimes we got to go back and pull from some of those prayers that's mounted up because we need a little extra strength today. What's that old song, Lord, I need a brand new touch? My strength from yesterday's gone. Sometimes you got to go back and you got to pull from some of those prayers that you've mounted up by, behind you. Some of those prayers that you preach, they were prayed. Some of those prayers, those prayers get drained out the next day. Some of those prayers you pray that God, that some of you keep God so busy that <laughs> that prayer is gone by noon. <laughs> prayer, second thing, prayer is vital to opening the windows of heaven. Prayer is vital to bringing the Spirit into the service. Prayer is vital to, to, to bring us together. Prayer is vital to inviting the presence of God and God's glory and God's anointing in the place. Prayer. You've heard me often say it after a service where we've had an incredible move of God and God has ministered all over the congregation. And you, you'll hear me say, somebody's been praying. Somebody's been on their face. Somebody's got a hold of God. Somebody's responsible for a move of God like that because they have brought prayer into the sanctuary and they have brought the glory into the sanctuary and they have brought the power of God into the sanctuary. That's why, that's why in the temple or in the tabernacle, when they built the tabernacle, that altar of incense that was right before the Ark of the Covenant, right before the, the, the uh, curtain that separated the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies from the holy place, was that altar of incense and that incense represents the prayers and the worship of the saints and it's right before the glory. You cannot enter the glory without, without having passed that, that altar of incense. You can't have the glory without sending up some prayers and some powerful prayers and being in the presence of God. If we're going to do the work of God if we're going to fulfill the will of God, we got to be people of prayer. People of prayer. I said, I said it earlier, I think, in prayer meeting. I believe this is one of the most important times of the week is 7, 7, 25, when we gather to pray. I think it's one of the most important times of the week because you, you look through Scripture and God talks about how when there's or what did he say? Gathering his name. He said, I'll be in, whether well, it's two or three. There's something about when the church comes together to pray. There's something powerful. I wouldn't miss a prayer meeting. I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss a prayer meeting for nothing. I, 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 I've got too many problems to miss a prayer meeting. <laughs> I'm fighting too many devils to miss a prayer meeting. I need what happens in a prayer meeting. And I need when I get in here to pray. I need some praying saints in here. Because where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in the midst of them. 
and when two or three agree on any one thing, what's the rest of that? Somebody help me. It shall be. Shall be. Yeah, we'll just say it shall be done. Where two or three agree on any one. I wouldn't miss a prayer meeting. Some people, I, 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 we live in a world and people think prayer meeting is optional now. It's optional. It's just an elective. It's not a required course anymore. It's just an elective. And it's just elective. And, and, and since it's just an elective, I, I'll just, I don't need to be there. I don't need to pray. Folks, we need two or three, two or three agreed, two or three prayed. The presence of God, the God said, it shall be done. We need the church to pray. We need the church to come together to pray. Some people, well, that was the third thing. I got the third point and didn't even tell you. Let me tell you something. Prayer is not a waste of time. You never waste your time praying. You never waste your time praying. And it's not an extracurricular activity. We are commanded to pray. Jesus gave us a, a, a template. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And on and on. He gave us a template. To pray. The disciples came to Jesus after he had modeled prayer. He, they came to Jesus and they didn't say, Teach us how to pray. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. We've got to be a people of prayer. It's not a waste of time. As a matter of fact, you study scripture. And it's, it's after every great prayer meeting you see a mighty move of God's Spirit. It's after every great prayer meeting that there is an increase in the church. It's after every great prayer meeting that you see God begin to manifest himself and his glory. It's after every great prayer meeting that the purpose of the kingdom is advanced. It's after every great prayer, and prayer meeting that the heavens are in and God pours out his spirit. It's after every great prayer meeting that God begins to do a mighty work in the spirit. We have personal prayer because we've got to be people of prayer. And then we got prayer meetings where we come together and unite together. And praying churches are used of God to change the world. Praying churches are used of God to change the world. You look at the book of Acts and you read through the book of Acts and the mighty works that God did in the book of Acts. And especially through the early years of the church, in those first four chapters of the book of Acts, there's several references to prayer. Acts chapter 1, they were gathered in prayer. They were praying in prayer. And they, they were seeking the face of God. God had told them, go back to Jerusalem and pray and wait for the promise of the Father. And they went back to Jerusalem and they began to pray. And then the day of Pentecost happens. And 120 believers are added, filled with the Holy Ghost. And then that same day, 3,000 believers are filled with the Holy Ghost. How? After a 10-day prayer meeting. They were in the upper room 10 days. Praying, seeking God. The Bible says they continued, Acts chapter 1, they continued with one accord in prayer. In prayer. When the church, when did when the church decide it's not bold to pray anymore? When the church decide that it's not important to pray anymore, Acts one and twenty four, and they prayed, and they prayed, and then they prayed, and Acts chapter two, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave them the utterance. Why? Because they'd been in prayer. 
They've been seeking God in prayer. You could skip on down in Acts chapter 2. Get down to back verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayer. They continued. Prayer didn't stop because they got the Holy Ghost. Prayer didn't stop because they'd been in church on Sunday. They continued in prayer. And what happened? Next verse. Verse 43 says, Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And you skip down a couple more verses. And praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. But the common thing is they prayed. What happens when the church prays? Heaven is moved when the church prays. Demons flee when the church prays. Now, I'll tell you, uh, those three scriptures we read in Acts chapter 16, first was just a prayer meeting. See, the thing about it is that the place where they were wasn't big enough to have a synagogue. So they didn't have a place to go pray. So they went down to the river to pray. And so Paul and them joined us down on the river to pray. They went down there. It was a prayer meeting. And that's where they had their first convert, Lydia, was converted in that prayer meeting. I've seen seen people get the Holy Ghost in prayer meetings. I've seen people get the Holy Ghost in prayer lives. I've seen people get the Holy Ghost in offerings. God can fill you with the Holy Ghost in an offering. And Lydia was converted in that prayer meeting. And she became, she became the first convert in Europe. And the Bible goes on in verse 16. And they, it refers to prayer again. It came to pass as we went to prayer that a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us. Isn't it interesting when people start praying the devil likes to show up? It happens. And the devil likes to show up and show out when people start praying. But you know, Paul, got, Paul had enough of it. And Paul, Paul finally turned around and cast the devil out of her. And made all these people mad because she was one of the reasons they were making so much money. But they were praying. Acts chapter 4. After Peter and John had gone up to the hour of prayer and the lame man was healed. The Bible says that they, Peter and John were arrested and were beaten and then they were released. And when they were being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. The Bible says, when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and began to pray. And it goes on to say, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken. There was such a powerful, powerful impartation of the Spirit because the place was shaken where they were assembled and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. You ought to come into a prayer meeting weak and walk out strong. You ought to come into a prayer meeting and, and struggling and walk out in victory. You ought to come into a prayer meeting and get filled all over again with the power of the Holy Ghost. And seek the face of God for the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. After that prayer meeting, in verse 33 of chapter 4, the Bible says, Great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace came upon them all. You skip down into chapter 5 after that prayer meeting. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about into Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Folks, that's what prayer can do. 
That's what prayer can do. When the church prays, I don't know if it can be any clearer or not. I, 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 don't, I don't think we can make it any, any more clear what, what the Bible says to us on, on prayer. Because if we'll pray, if we'll pray, God will back up your prayers. If you'll pray, God will show himself in your prayers. If you will pray, if you will seek the face of God, God will send an earthquake and God will shake things up. The last scripture we read in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, was Paul and Silas in prison. And the Bible says they prayed and sang praises to God. And when they prayed, there was an earthquake that shook that jail so hard that it opened the doors of the cells. See, if two... There's two there praying. If two agree on any one thing. If two agree as on earth touching any one thing that they shall ask, it shall be done. If two. That's how powerful prayer is. That's how powerful prayer is. But you start putting a church pray. You start putting a church pray. And five of you shall chase a hundred, the Bible says. And a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Prayer. I'm going to tell you now, this will be the first time it's mentioned from the pulpit, but you'll hear it a lot over the next several weeks. September is going to be a month of prayer and fasting for us. I'm calling this church to prayer in September. We got revival coming in October with the Bryants. But September is going to be a month of prayer and fasting. And we're going to not unite together in prayer. And we're going to get a hold of heaven. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to rend the heavens. And we're going to believe God. Because we're going to, we're going to put, our, put our face to the altar. And we're going to believe God to do the miraculous to do the supernatural, to do what we cannot do, to see people filled with the Holy Ghost, to see people healed, to see the lame walk, the deaf hear, the blind see, to see the dead raised. We're going to believe it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to fast. September is going to be our church month of prayer and fasting. And we're going to chase a hundred. And we're, we're going to put 10,000 to flight as a church. Because when the church prays, something happens. When the church prays, the atmosphere changes. When the church prays, we change. I change, you change. When the church prays, anything is possible to them that believe stand with me. There's power. There's power when we pray. I can't put a meter on it. I can't, I can't diagram it. I can't graph it. Because there's no limit to what can happen if the church will pray. There's no limit to what God will do if the church will pray. And prayer has never went out of style. Why don't we come at the end of this service tonight? You can, you can kneel, you can stand, whatever you want to do, but we're going to pray together. Now, let me, let me say, this. if you've got a prayer partner, we did this a long time ago. If you've got a prayer partner, find your prayer partner. If your prayer partner's here, find your prayer partner. And get with your prayer partner. If you don't have a prayer partner, you go find somebody that's standing alone. Say, I want you to be my prayer partner. We're going to pray together. We're, gonna, we're two. We're going to pray together. We're going to unite together as prayer partners. And we're going to believe tonight for God to do the miraculous. For God to do the supernatural. We're going to believe God tonight. Now listen, here's what your prayer partner does. 
When you have a prayer request, you call your prayer partner. Prayer partner, I'm having a bad day. And I just need you to pray for me today. I need you to cover me in prayer. Prayer partner, I've got my daughter's having trouble. And I just need you to join and agree with me in prayer that the enemy's not going to have his way. And that the enemy's going to be defeated. I want, you to, I want you to pray with me. Your prayer partner is going to join with you in prayer and believe with you for God to do in your life whatever you need him to do. So that's going to be, you're going to have them on speed dial. Have your prayer partner on speed dial. And you call your prayer partner and get a hold of your prayer partner and say, hey, I need you to pray. I know you know how to pray. I need you to pray for me. Say, what if I can't tell them what it is? Then don't tell them what it is. Just tell them to pray. I just need a prayer partner. Let's pray right now. God, in your name. Jesus' name. He love us, Shatana, but I don't know, no, 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 no,